This may come as a surprise to you, as my coverage of the games has been pretty low, but the Trails series is actually my favourite set of JRPGs to date, and Trails in the Sky the Third shares the number one spot on the list of my favourite games of all time, with the otherwise unrivaled classic that is Kingdom Hearts 2. I've actually been wanting to cover the Trails series, or just any game made by Falcom in general, ever since my videos on Nayuta no Kiseki's fan translation and East 9 over a year ago. So starting from now, I'm actually going to make more of an effort to make some space in my schedule to cover some more Falcom games. Problem is, I finished Cold Steel 4 just before I started putting out videos on this channel and I'm pretty much all caught up on most of Falcom's more popular releases these days. And I'm not in a huge rush to jump back into the series and start reviewing them, as I don't feel like enough time has really passed to warrant a replay of them yet. That being said, there is still plenty of Falcom games to cover, ones that have either kind of been lost to time, or ones that people have been sleeping on for a long, long while. And while I still intend on covering Falcom's new releases in some way or another, I also want to look back at Falcom's other titles that a lot of people aren't necessarily talking about. After all, I was the only review for Nayuta no Kiseki at the time, and that's done really well for me, even if that was because I somehow managed to summon a remaster into existence. And with all of that being said, here's a review for Falcom's crossover fighting game East vs Trails in the Sky Alternative Saga, as well as its translation patch done by the very dedicated team down at the Geofront fan translation group. Falcom have always been masters of let's call it inexpensive game development. The company has been pushing out at least one game a year for quite a while now, even back then when they only had about 40 or so employees. And a way we can easily see this stuff is like with the Trails series, where usually the games come in sets of two where the second game will reuse a lot of assets from the first. Or how Tokyo Xanadu is blatantly built off of Cold Steel's skeleton. But I don't think that there's any game in Falcom's library that's quite as egregious as East vs Trails in the Sky with its repurposing of assets. To put it simply, YVT is a fighting game. A very non-typical fighting game, but a fighting game nonetheless. One that I think is best described as a cross between Final Fantasy Distia and Power Stone 2, which, funnily enough, are also two atypical fighting games on the PSP. The thing about East vs Trails that's important to mention is that it's almost completely built off of East 7, to the point where it feels like an incredibly in-depth mod at times. Other than a new jump button and air combos, the combat is exactly the same, and barring Chester from Ophenfell Ghana, the entire east side of the character roster is made up of characters from E7. Models, movesets, animations and all. This isn't a complaint per se, after all I do find Falcom's label use of asset flipping rather charming. Yeah, that's it Cold Steel 4. Just use three completely different art styles with a sepia filter over the front for a flashback. Nobody's gonna notice. But I do find it quite amusing that if I took the UI away, you might be hard pressed to tell me which Adol vs Geist fight is from E7 and which one's from East vs Trails in the Sky. Now, inexpensive game development aside, how does YVT actually play? Well, it plays alright. I mentioned fighting game Kasoge on my previous video on the Persona 4 Arena and Ultimax manga adaptations, so if you want to really learn more about what Kasoge specifically is, then check out that video. But East vs Trails is absolutely Kasoge. <laughs> it turns out that repurposing a action RPG into a fighting game is going to result in a horrible, exploitable mess of a game. I compared East vs Trails to Power Stone 2 and Distia earlier, and it's really simple as to why. Like Power Stone 2, you are able to play matches with up to four characters on various differently shaped stages, with a very simple combat system. In East vs Trails you have a very standard attack string for basic damage, with air variants included, a charge attack designed to build up SP, which can then be used on a variety of different skills, i.e. your special moves, and using these skills or getting hit will charge up your extra meter which is essentially your character's super move. 
And for defensive options, you have a dodge for getting out of the way and a block for reducing damage. If you were able to block just before an attack lands on you, you will instead perform a flash guard, nullifying any of the chip damage as well as making all of your attacks critical hits for a short time. There is no witch time for a last second dodge yet, however, as that wasn't a thing until Memories of Cellsetter. The whole thing is incredibly simple, and I really doubt that you'll be seeing a side tourney at Animevo anytime soon. The whole thing feels kind of less like a fighting game and more like a combat focused party game without any of those party game elements such as random items or crazy stage hazards appearing. What starts to flesh the game out a bit more is the Final Fantasy Distia side of things. Each character can level up, and as they do, they will learn multiple skills, but they can only bring four of them into battle with you. What you can also do is equip accessories to your characters that will give them various different stat buffs or passive effects to them, such as starting a match with a full super ready to go, or giving them a chance to inflict status ailments from normal attacks. This makes a big aspect of the game heavily dependent on what builds and loadouts you develop for your characters. The combat itself is fairly fun, after all, it is just copied and pasted from E7, but at the same time it really doesn't feel like it was very well suited for a fighting game. From these aspects alone, it kinda makes the game pretty much impossible to properly balance, especially when you start adding stuff like support characters into the mix on top of this. Support characters basically work like the summons from Distia, where they can be equipped and used once per battle to give you some sort of crazy effects in the moment. It's also a pretty nice way to include some non-combatant or deeper cut characters from Falcom's games. Characters like the Zwei Protags from, well, Zwei, or the clumsy sorceress Della from Brandish, and Onion Boy and the Hungry Nun from whatever game they're from, I can't quite remember and neither can Falcom. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Regardless to say, the game, despite being a fighting game, is really not designed to be taken seriously or played competitively in any sort of way, but it can still result in a pretty enjoyable dumb game night with some friends, something that Normally, to get the most out of, you'd need to do a crazy amount of grinding on four separate PSPs to unlock every character, stage, move, item, etc. Luckily, however, the Geofront Translations download page happens to have a save with everything already unlocked on it, so all that tedium can luckily just be skipped. Speaking of the Geofront Translation, actually, that gives me a very nice segue into the story mode. East vs Trails has actually had an English translation for quite a long while now, but that was just solely for the menus and it was a little rough around the edges still. But this is Nihon Falcon we're talking about, the people who make the cool JRPGs with a crazy amount of world building in them and unique NPCs on every corner, surely the best part of its fighting game is going to be its story- It's fanfiction. It's- it's literally just a fanfiction plot. Granted, they do use actual lore from multiple games in Falcom's library, such as Xanadu and the pre-Trails Legend of Heroes games, just to justify and or explain what's going on, but what is going on is literally just fanfiction. Basically, the land of Xanadu has a dragon-related problem every 1,000 years or so, and each time he arises, the world isekais a bunch of new heroes in to act as a glorified pest control, this time calling in Adol and his Altego squad, as well as Estelle and her homies. But oh no, the Dragon King has used an evil spell that controls them all, and now all the gang have to fight the rest of the heroes to bring them back to their senses. It's about as by the numbers as a fighting game story can get, and all five story modes are largely the same. I do appreciate Adol having an actual voice outside of his own story, and there are plenty of those neat little fan service moments like people comparing Geist to Agate since they're both hotheads who like hanging around little people. And I also just adore how Estelle, after falling for a trap, which results in a one-on-free fight between her and the three big villain characters from the respective series, just pulls a watchman and powers through like an unstoppable force all country bumpkin farm girls seem to be in Falcom games. What do you seem to understand? I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me! 
And actually, that brings me to the Geofront translation itself, and yeah, that's not really a ton to say other than it's great just like Zero and Azure's translations. It feels just like a official release, barring a few understandable omissions like English VO and maybe a few community-based memes got in there, but that's about it. There's no broken English or anything like that, and the dialogue all feels incredibly natural and faithful to the characters we know. It definitely had a lot of heart and love put into it. There's even a pretty nice HD texture pack for the menus and such. It's not a big addition to the game, but it certainly helps clean it up a little bit for emulators. Now, the unique gameplay side of the story modes is pretty simple as well, but there are a few nice surprises in there, at least for the first time you're playing the game. For the most part, the game does just kind of throw possessed friends at you to fight, but there are a few instances where it will actually throw unique AI-controlled only enemies that kind of act like mini-bosses at you instead. There's nothing too special about these fights, to be perfectly honest. I mean, they are just kind of using E7 as a base for this game, and E7 probably has the worst bosses in the modern East titles. They're all, for the most part, just kind of normal enemies with super armor and a ton of health, but nevertheless, they are still a refreshing change of pace compared to the regular fights, and it does make the story mode feel a little less repetitive going through. And the final boss with the Dragon King himself is actually pretty fun and almost reminiscent of the bosses from the Ark Engine games, or at the very least some of the more interesting endgame bosses from E7. After the five fairly short story modes, all you have left to do in terms of the single player experience is to play them again with harder rescaled fights, or to start doing repeated arcade mode runs with the other characters. East vs Trails is unfortunately a game that was very deliberately designed for the PSP, which means it was only really meant to be a sort of time waster on a Japanese subway for the most part, and it's kind of designed with that, yeah, the player has tons of time to grind sort of mentality in it. Which is why that optional save that Geofront provide is especially nice to play the game with friends without much tedium. But it also, unfortunately, kind of takes the incentive away from playing the game outside of its fairly simplistic combat, which really doesn't hold up for all that long, and playing it as a party game with a bunch of friends can only extend that life so much. And I think that's probably part of East vs Trails' main downfall, is that back when this first released, these would have been all brand new characters. They would have been the Monstrum Nox cast, like a couple of months after that released. It would have been Reen in Class 7 running about for the Trails side, so it would have kind of held up just by its sheer fan value alone. Hell, it even had Lloyd as a secret character a few months before Zero New Kiseki released over in Japan. It would have had the appeal of all of these brand new characters who are uh, the new faces of each respective series, as well as brand new sneak peeks for what's to come in the future. But now, all of those are pretty old news, so the game actually has to stand on its two legs by itself. Since when you look at the roster, the trail side is perfectly fine, it's all of the main picks from the party for the first three games, but the east side is very heavily lacking. Sure, like Dogi, Chester, Adol, and Geiss are all really cool picks that would probably make it into a new fighting game if Falcom happened to make one, but would anybody really be excited about Elk making it into a new Falcom fighting game? Probably not, no. So then this kind of begs the question, just who the hell is this game for? And well, I guess it's for the fairly small demographic of Falcom superfans, to be honest. There's really not enough substantial content in the single player to actually warrant grinding in it for hours and hours on end. And the multiplayer is a fairly fun party style game to play with a bunch of friends, but considering the ways of playing it, multiplayer in English either involve having four custom firmware PSPs or using an emulator, or rather, four emulators, 
it means that there's a fair few number of steps that you'll have to go through to actually set up a East vs Trails game night, which isn't going to be something that you're going to be doing on a weekly basis, it's something you'll do for maybe one or two evenings. And while setting up those emulators and such is less work than you'd think, it's still more work than you'd hope. So I really feel like the main reason you'd actually want to try this game out, other than just a passing impulse, is if you've played all of the Eastern Trails games already, and yet you're still thirsting, longing, pining for more screen time with Big Stick Chan and her wielder, and I mean at the end of the day, why wouldn't you be? On the bright side though, there is an absolute ton of stuff that this game has given us Falcom fans that we don't actually need to play the game to enjoy such as the various soundtrack rearrangements and the artwork that's in the game. And there is definitely some great versions of these songs, but this being Falcom, that's really kind of expected at this point. There's even a few brand new tracks, like the game's main theme Daybreak sprinkled in there too, which are all bangers as expected. And to all you singer haters out there, you and your lack of taste for the finer things in life, like guitars filled with bees, don't have to worry too much, since this was quite a while before he joined up with Falcom. The artwork on the other hand is admittedly a little bit weakened on the PSP screen due to its low resolution, however, pretty much all of it can be found online pretty easily. But when you can actually find the full resolution version of these pieces, they just look absolutely wonderful. And with them being all done by various different artists, there's a bunch of different art styles that you can all enjoy to boot as well. I know what I'm saying here isn't really much about the game itself, but a lot of these pieces of artwork were made because of the game, and because of that it means it's still partly responsible for them, so I figured I'd give it credit where it's due. After all, a lot of this art is really cool and dares to ask bold and brave questions like, what if Elena from Ophenfell Ghana wasn't completely irrelevant and actually was cool? Seriously though, to everybody who's played Ophenfell Ghana, just think about how removing Elena from the story would change absolutely nothing. In the end, I think East vs Trails in the Sky Alternative Saga is definitely a bit of a deep cut pick for Falcom's library, and it hasn't really aged too gracefully at all by this point, simply due to its very nature. However, I do personally find it very charming that this game exists at all, considering it is essentially just made up from spare code and assets. For most Falcom fans, I feel like this is probably either going to be more of a collection item, or something you'll emulate for a few days and then forget about it entirely, unfortunately. Since if we ignore the DS, this is probably Falcom's worst game? Not to say that it's bad, it's just exceedingly average compared to the other amazing games that Falcom can put out. Either way, I'm super glad and thankful to the Geofront team who were able to bridge the language barrier once again, and to get it in the hands of the rest of the Falcom fandom, since this one always felt like a pretty weird omission. And with the end of this video, let's just hope that Falcom will take another crack at a fighting game one day, and for my sake, I hope it's a more traditional one. I'd love it if they outsourced it to a dev team like French Bread personally, especially since, like Falcom, they're kind of this Japanese indie studio that punches way above their weight. But at the same time, I think Arxis would probably be a really likely candidate too. Only the future will tell though.